Hey guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll show you guys my shades that Queen Breakers both set up. This is the setup I've been using for the Queen Breaker for a while now, even before it was brought into year 2, and I've found it to be extremely effective, to the point where using a Queen Breaker spell without shades up feels completely unnatural. But before we get into all the Queen Breaker spell goodness, I just want to thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. We passed 10,000 over the weekend, and the support on my videos and even on my stream has been absolutely amazing lately. I really cannot thank you guys enough. I was gonna make an entire video saying thank you to you guys, but honestly, I like I was all over the place, so that didn't really work out. But I really wanted to thank you guys anyway for 10,000 subscribers. It really does mean a lot. But before I start rambling on, let's get into the Queen Breakers bow setup here. Now, of course, the Queen Breakers needs no introduction. I'm gonna assume most of you are familiar with the weapon and how it performs. But let's just quickly sum up the perks available to this weapon anyway. My choice of perks is integral to the build, and a lot of people have been asking why I spec my Queen Breaker Spool like I do. You obviously have the choice between two scopes, the Machman sites that provide more impact but a slower charge time, or the Combat sites that provide a faster charge time and less impact. The Combat sites really are the obvious choice here. Queen Breaker Spool performs best in medium range, and in order to take out rushing shotgunners as well as primates with fast times to kill, you need to be able to get your shot off fast. The first main perk is Hip Fire, which makes the Queen Breaker Spool surprisingly reliable from the hip and even in mid-air, however, you'll almost always want to aim down sight with this weapon anyway. Hip Fire should only ever be a last resort. In the middle column, you have the choice between Single Point Sling, Faster Handling and Strip Speed, Flared Mac will Faster Reload, and Send It, More Range and Aim Assist, and a smaller ammo capacity. A lot of people are presented in this column, but in my opinion the weapon has more than enough aim assist as is, and single point sling really fits my build that relies heavily on mobility and fast weapon handling. The last perk is of course hidden hand giving this weapon even more aim assist. For the Night Stalker subclass you can really use any setup you want to, but shade step is obviously a necessity for this build. I also offer maximizing agility, and also going for a better control jump with bones of AR to further strengthen this build's focus on mobility. You can see my entire skill tree on the screen if you wish to try it out, however the previously mentioned skills are the most integral ones to this build. The thing about Shade Step is that it can buy you time. The charge up time of the Queen Breaker's Bow is arguably the biggest weakness of this weapon and it prevents it from reliably challenging snipers as they don't have the same drawback. You can use Shade Step to throw off your opponent's aim, whether you're using a sniper or another weapon, and before they can readjust you can get a shot off. Another thing you will notice that I do a lot in these clips is, just after I come out of my shade step animation, I immediately start strafing. Usually if I shade step left, I strafe right, and vice versa. This really throws off the opponent's aim, and once again it buys you time to charge up your weapon. You can also make smart approaches by jumping on top of cover while charging your Queen Breaker's bow, once again forcing your opponent to readjust, which buys you time. Using this weapon to its full potential really is all about making smart approaches in order to buy you time to charge up the weapon. I really can't stress enough how important this is, as you will flinch a lot with this weapon when you're getting shot at, making it much harder to hit your shots. This weapon isn't otherwise hard to aim or hit your shots with, but getting shot at, especially by a hand cannon, really throws off your aim. And of course the charge time puts you at a major disadvantage against the sniper, so you need to be able to engage them in a smart way that they will not be expecting. I know a lot of people have a hard time using this weapon, it definitely helps if you're used to using a sniper as the weapon acts like a sniper in many ways, and the charge time is really all you have to get used to. Once you've gotten used to it, you will have an absolute blast using this weapon, it's just way too much fun. The thing about it is that it really handles like a scout rifle, it aims in much faster than a sniper rifle. As a matter of fact, it only takes 5 frames to aim in if you're using single point sling, this is twice as fast as a sniper with snapshot. The handling is of course also lightning fast, allowing you to use this weapon reliably in much closer ranges than a sniper rifle. Personally, I've used it so much at this point that I'm honestly better with a Queen Breaker's Bolt than a sniper rifle. That said, you do have to keep in mind that going against really defensive hard scoping teams is extremely difficult with this weapon, and a lot of the times when I use this in trials, I have to switch to a sniper rifle because the other team is just so defensive that the Queen Breaker's Bolt cannot be effective. But overall this weapon is just way too much fun, I'd say it's definitely viable in trials and even in some semi-competitive environments, but the weaknesses, especially the charge of time, will put you at a disadvantage against certain teams, especially defensive ones. But that is all for my Shade Step Queen Breaker build, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and I will see you next time.